Hey, I'm Diana J. Brody from Next Level Editing Academy, and today we are going to do trim with only keyboard shortcuts. That's it. Keyboard shortcuts. No mousing about for us. Let's do it. Okay, we're going to start in Avid, but before we start, let me thank Andy Young for requesting this exact video. Sorry it took me so long to do it, Andy, but here it is now. Andy reached out to me over the Blue Collar Post Collective Facebook group, and if you guys aren't in it, whether you edit on Avid, Premiere, or any NLE whatsoever, you want to get on that Facebook group. By the way, not being paid for this endorsement, just love that Facebook group. It's a fantastic resource. Okay, let's get down to it. So, in Avid, we're going to want to, in both instances, since we're doing keyboard shortcuts, Premiere or Avid, we're going to start by mapping stuff to our keyboard. So here we go. Follow the bouncing ball. We're coming up to file. No, I'm lying. Yep, yeah, no, I'm not. Here we go. We're going to come up to file. We're going to go to settings. Then we're going to come down here to keyboard and we're going to double click on the keyboard. Then we're going to do command three or control three if you're on a PC and call up the command palette. You can also come up here to tools, go to the tools, pull down and go all the way down to command palette right there. Okay, in the command palette, we're gonna map a few things from, uh, from here to our keyboard. Starting with in edit, you wanna get top and tail and pull them down. We're gonna do a button to button reassignment. Don't forget, button to button reassignment. Come up to the edit tab, top and tail and pull them down. I already have them mapped on my keyboard on my shift keys. Mine are shift zero and shift minus, shift zero and shift minus. And then the other thing uh, we're gonna map, you can put them wherever you want, by the way, you don't have to put them there. A lot of people have uh, expand and contract the timeline on minus and equals, uh, which is also the plus button because that's where it natively is in uh, Premiere. And so if you want to keep your keyboards the same, you can always move them, right? So I have these same three keys right here. Uh, I also have on F1, F2, and F3, and I could easily map Shift F1. Let's do it together. Let's Shift F1, uh, uh, Tail, Shift F2, Top, right? So I can do it there. So I've got them there and there, whatever. You do you. Okay, and now let's get these three buttons. These three buttons I've mapped similarly in both places. Uh, so, um, usually I don't have keys mapped in both places, but sometimes I do. So let's do it this way. Uh, so let's go up to the trim tool, the trim tab right here. Trim side A, I have on zero and or F1. That's not confusing at all. I have trim side B to the minus or F2. And then I have trim A and B sides right there on F3 or right here on equals. I love choices. Everybody loves choices. The other thing we want to make sure that you have if you're editing an Avid, right, is down here uh, on your uh, up and down keys, right? Your up and down keys. Go ahead and go to the move tab and put go to previous edit on the up arrow and go to next edit. Uh, event, go to next event, they call it, uh, which is your cut point on the down arrow. So go ahead and map those as well if you don't already have those there, or if you have them somewhere else, that's totally fine. I just find that it's easier to remember if they're there. This is one of the few keys that I do intentionally have in two places. So it goes rewind, pause, fast forward, go to previous, go to next, so I can do it there and here, but I'm telling you what, right now, I'm going to wipe those out at some point and just leave them up there. I don't know why I remapped them in two places. It might have been that I was showing someone something. And one more thing we want to do before we quit out is we want to map the trim function to our keyboard as well. So let's go to other and then right here on trim mode, you can put it down as a button, but the point is we want to use our keyboard. So let's put it on our keyboard. For me, I have it on my page up and I have my effect editor on the page down. I've had them there for years, but you can put yours anywhere, right? You can bring it down and put it on F5. You can put it on any key you want. You do you. I'm excited to see where it lands for you, but pull this trim mode down. 
So uh, we're gonna need that button as well. Okay, now we're gonna get out of all of this stuff. And uh, so I have uh, right here, good old Denny. And um, let's, uh, let's say that, uh, let me do this. Let's say I've got this lonely clown right here. And I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna just edit this in just to give us a little better visual, right? So let me edit this in here. So, oh, I had the lonely clown there too. So we can tell that from the dupe detection, right? So here's the lonely clown. Let's say I wanted the lonely clown to come all the way over to here, right? Uh, I wanted this edge to come all the way over to there. There's a bunch of different ways you can go about doing it. We could use extend, which by the way, if you're not using extend, I've got a video for that. I'm gonna put right up here, right? So my extend video, if I'm gonna explain all about extend in that extend video for Premiere and Avid. So if you're not using extend, I'm gonna make your life 37% better just by this video. And I'll put it at the end as well. Uh, but we're not going to use extend today. We're just going to use the trim tools, but extend is a trim function and I love it. But if we're not going to use extend to get this cut point right here to where my playhead is, we could trim it over, right? So I'm going to put myself into trim. We're going to make sure our V1 is lit up because I want to trim just that edge right there. So just V1 is lit up and I'm going to go into trim. I'm going to hit page up, which is where I put my trim tool, but you do you. If you put it on P, then hit P wherever you got it. And that puts us into trim. And you remember here we have our two little, this is letting us know that it's going to be a roller to one side, a roller to the other side, that both sides are active and it's going to be a roll function. It's a, an overwrite function. So as this gets longer, this clip will get shorter, right? Because it's a roll function. It's overwriting that information as it goes by. So once I'm here in both, these keys right here are natively on M comma period and slash in your, on your keyboard. That's native. I hit my one button where my trim, my trim key is the moment of brain freeze. And now I'm going to hit the slash key on my keyboard. Cause that's going to move it 10 frames that way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And I'm not quite there yet, so I'll have to keep going. I can also hit L for play and it will, oh, look at it trim in real time. Oh, that's exciting stuff. And then, you know, you can hit your space bar to preview your, your trim right there. Uh, so, or I can hit J to go the other way, right? So J and then it slides, or I can go M, M, M. And if I want to nudge it, just one frame, comma, 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 oh, one too far, period period, period, to go one frame back that way. There you go. The other thing you can do, notice right up here, it says 85, right? I can just go minus 85, and now it's back to zero to where it was. I can go plus 20, and I've moved it 20 frames, right? So that's another way you can use your keyboard to do this same thing. Now, what if I wanted to not make this clip any shorter but make this clip longer, this clip right here longer, while retaining the same exact length of this clip. Well, instead of coming up to this window, clicking on this window, so just that's active, and I've got the yellow, uh, more like a ripple edit than a roll edit, if we use some Premiere terms, this is gonna be uh, more like an insert, yellow for insert, right? Uh, so this is going to be more like an insert edit where it's non-destructive to the clip next to it while altering the clip, this clip here. So if I have it on one side, then the other by clicking on this window, uh, then it will right open up this gap, but we don't want to, as you can see, open up that gap, but that's not what we want to do, right? Like, I don't want to have to come up here, ugh, click on a thing go ahead and, you know, then hit some keys. Let's not do that. Let's use just the keyboard, right? So we have mapped um, those keys before. Let me, let me just give you a visual. We have mapped these keys before right here. See these keys here. I also put them up there because I'm crazy. Uh, so these are the keys we're going to use. This is 
uh, trim B side, trim A side. So right here, this would be the A side, this would be the B side. So if I wanna trim just the A side, I'm gonna hit the nine key, that's not true. I'm gonna hit the zero key, that's the one. There we go, I can remember a thing or two. I'm gonna hit the zero key. And the zero key is where I have mapped uh, to affect only this side. So now just that, you see the roller to the inside. If I hit the minus key, which is where I've mapped it to, it's gonna just affect B, this clip. If I hit the plus, it's gonna go back to rollers on both sides. Right now we're gonna hit minus, I'm sorry, we're gonna hit zero. We're just gonna affect this. Then I'm gonna come down here and use the slash key. So it'll go 10 frames at a time that way. Slash, 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 which is not that easy to say. And I don't know how Guns N' Roses ever called slash a million times uh, in a row without tripping over their own tongue. But you see how it opened up a gap. We only affected this. We did not affect that at all. And it pushed that audio to the side with it, which we can fix later in the back end. That's not the point of this video. So if all of a sudden I'm like, I like that, but I also want to lengthen this without altering that, I can hit the minus key, which is where I, where I mapped to trim the B side, this being the B side, this being the B side. Now the rollers to the inside and that is lit up and that is grayed out. So we know we're only gonna affect this clip. Now I'm gonna hit M to go 10 frames at a time back that way. I can use the number pad too, right? Minus 50, boom, uh, if I wanted to just using the keyboard, right? Now if I'm like, okay, but actually, now I want this to scoot over this a little bit, where this gets longer, that gets shorter, I can hit the plus key, where I had mapped to both sides to affect both sides, and now I've got the rollers on both sides again, and I can hit the M key, right? And now that got longer while that got shorter, and there you go. So that is the main way I I use trim uh, without having to use the mouse, just using keyboard shortcuts. Now, there's another way to trim that's pretty cool that I think you guys are gonna like. Remember, when you wanna get out of trim mode in Avid, you can hit escape or you can hit your TC bar right there and get out of trim that way. Okay, now let's say we've done that kind of trimming, but let's say I wanna get rid of everything that's in front of this blue bar. I'm like, you know what, after all of that, I just wanna get rid of this stuff right here. Here's how you can do it much, much quicker than going in, out, extract. Perfectly fine way to do it, but it takes a long time. We can do it a lot faster by using the trim functions that we mapped earlier on the keyboard. I put on zero and minus, right? So uh, zero is top and minus is tail. Top and tail. And uh, I, put them, I put them next to each other and I highly recommend you, you do as well. So we did that at the beginning. So let's say for the sake of argument, I want to get rid of everything at the top of this clip. I, I, I think of it, it, it kind of confuses me because I'm dyslexic. So I think of that as the tail of the clip, but it doesn't because it's behind my playhead, right? It's backwards in time, forwards in time, but that's not how Avid works and it kind of freaks with my mind. But um, so this, they consider this the top of the clip. So if I want to get rid of all of this up to where my playhead is, let's say for the sake of argument, after I did all that trimming, I'm like, eh, I don't want that. And I don't want to have to go in, out, extract, uh, how pedestrian. We want to just get rid of everything that's before this playhead. That's just this clip. I have my V1 lit up. V1 here, playhead here, so shift zero, boom. Got rid of it, up to my playhead, just got rid of it. So instead of having to put it in, in and out, I just go shift zero, gone, right? Now, let's say I'm like, ooh, I like this right here, it's the rest of this clip I don't want. Well, then I can just do shift uh, minus, which is where I mapped it, and it'll kill the rest of that clip, just like that, gone. 
And that's how you do it in Avid. Those are what I use most of all in Avid for the trim keys to use my keyboard instead of having to do a lot of mousing around. Okay, now one last point that I wanna make is this. When we go, uh, I'm going into trim by hitting my the key that I mapped the trim tool to. So here we are in trim. Now let's say I wanna be over here and I wanna affect this all the way at the end, all the way at the end from here. I don't have to come over here click there then uh then go back and hit um then hit my key to get the rollers on both sides and then do that right i still don't need the mouse to do that so uh let's say for the sake of argument i was over here doing some trim over here and i want to trim over here now i can hit my up and down arrows on my keyboard like we mapped before at the very beginning so i hit my down arrow down down Note that I only have V1 lit up, not A1, not anything else, just V1, because I'm moving on the V1 line. But you can have others. You can still do this in B and trim and go cut to cut to cut, even in the audio, right? And then if I want to trim that audio out, I can just boop, 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 I'm already in trim, just by using the keyboard. And then if I click off A1 and click on V1, I can go cut to cut to cut on the V1 track, right? There we go. Uh, and I can hop around that way. And then I can, you know, hit my keys and say, okay, I want to pull that out. Boom, 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 boom. If I go cut to cut though, it's gonna, it's gonna put it back on the rollers on each side. It won't stay in that kind of ripple trim mode uh, for uh, going cut to cut to cut. It will knock you back into with both of these lit up, but you can do it. And then you can just go ahead and hit whichever whichever side you want to affect, right? Boom, like that, and uh, Bob's your uncle. So let's head over to the Premiere side. Things work super similarly over in Premiere. I think you're gonna dig it. Join me. Okay, here we are in the Premiere side, and first we're gonna start by putting things on our keyboard because not for nothing, that's the point of the video. So let's come up here to Premiere Pro, pull down, and go to Keyboard Shortcuts. Boom, here's our keyboard. Look how nice and big it is. Gosh, Avid, catch up with the way things go. So tiny on Avid, so much bigger here. Uh, so we're gonna start by mapping a few things right away. Uh, first of all, we're gonna map rolling edit, rolling edit tool. That's just like in Avid where it's got the rollers on both sides and it's gonna be sort of an overwrite function, right? One side's gonna get longer, the other side's gonna get shorter. So rolling edit, then we're gonna do ripple edit. That's like when we had only one side lit up instead of the other on, uh, on Avid. So here it is on Premiere, ripple edit tool, which I've put on T. So roll, uh, roll, I put on R and ripple, I put on T so that they would be right next to each other easier for me to remember, right? So you can hit one button and get to those instead of having to click on the, on your, on your uh, timeline. Uh, and then um, we are, uh, we are going to do uh, some ripple trims now. So ripple trim to the next, uh, to the next edit in the playhead and ripple trim to the previous. That's like what I just showed you in Avid where you're cutting off one side or you're cutting off the back end. Uh, they consider that the front end, I guess in Avid. Anyway, I've put those on G and H so I can go to here and then G and H right there. And it helps me to remember. However, it is natively already on your keyboard this particular function, these two functions. So ripple trim to the next edit to playhead is natively on W and natively on Q for most human beings. That's where uh, Premiere put them. I already have two things I'm very married to on Q and W, so I put mine on G and H where I didn't have really anything before. So you do you, put them wherever you want, or use them natively on Q and W. That's not all. The next thing we're gonna map is, we're gonna map select nearest edit point. 
Select nearest edit point to ripple in. Select nearest edit point to ripple out. Select nearest edit point as roll. Select nearest edit point as trim in and trim out. And we're gonna do all of those. This is where I put them. I used modifier keys. Uh, ripple in, shift T. Uh, uh, you know, sh uh, I'm sorry, command T. Shift Y, Shift R, Command E, Option E. You do you, put them wherever you want, but go ahead and type in select near and then all of these, map these to your keyboard. Then go ahead and take a screen grab of that so that you see where all your shortcuts are and put it off to your secondary monitor, right? So you can see where your shortcuts are until you've got them locked up here. I suggest you put them all in a group somewhere that makes sense to you so that um, it's easier to remember. Uh, but here we go, let's go, let's actually edit. All right, we're done the prep, we're actually gonna edit. This is big time fun and here we go. So here I am in the timeline um, and we are going to edit. Uh, and we're gonna, let's do it. Let's just start trimming, right? So uh, right here on V4, V4, I have, uh, uh, let's say that I want to, um, I want to trim this out, but I don't want to pull it like that, right? I don't want to just go over here, pull it. Uh, I don't want to use, I don't want to use my mouse. We're just going to use the keys. So R for roll, R for roll. So if you notice, I've got my, uh, selection tool up. So it's just my selection tool, just like a normal day. Deep, 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 deep. But then I hit the R button and watch what happens when I hit the R button. Ah, it turns to the roll tool. Now I can, uh, if I want, use um, uh, select to select the nearest edit, uh, or I can click, but now I'm using my mouse, right? Um, or I can use uh, the T key and that is that gives me this function. So the R tool will pull this out and affect nothing else, right? Very nice. Now I've just L cut that over, but the T key will give me the one where I open it up and it opens it up and, and puts in a gap, right? If I, if I add edit all the way down the line and I, and I've, and I'm there, I can do, you know, uh, minus 55 and it will open up a 55 frame gap right there or I can be in R instead of T in in roll instead of ripple and do minus you know 33 and then boom and now it's L cut that so I've done that but I've still used my mouse to click on the incident point which is not what we want to do we're only using the keyboard today and we're going to be really 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 adamant about that so what i can do is look now i'm back in just my selection tool right just the arrow just the normal arrow Boop -de -doop -de -doop. uh so now what i'm going to do is select nearest edit point as a ripple in which i have on command t so that was remember all the select nearest that i made you guys map like a like the like the taskmaster that I am, I'm going to do sh command T up. Oh, let's, let's not be on. I want to just be, this is one of the few times, by the way, that premier cares about where your selectors are. So if I have my selectors on all of these and I want to do, you know, select nearest edit point as roll, let's say as a roll where it's on both sides, which I have on shift R. If these are lit up, it will select all of those. If these are not lit up, let me deselect those. If those are not lit up and I do shift R, it will only select what is live. So V4 is live. If I wanted to take all of these down the line like that, then I do shift R, boom. Now we'll take all of these. One of the few times that Premiere super, super, super really cares about what selectors you have on on your timeline side. Uh, so now I've got all of those lit up and I can go minus 55, boom, or plus 23, boom. And then it goes to that side, right? If I, instead of roll, I do ripple, which I have on shift T. So we're gonna do select 
nearest edit point as ripple in. That's it. I've got it written down over here. I'll put it on the screen below so you can see it. Uh, I, um, I can't, I just can't retain that entire sentence. Select nearest edit point as ripple in. I have on command T. I do command T and all three of these are lit up. And now I'm going to do minus 55 and boom, broke open a hole, move that. You can tell this is repeating media because I've got dupe detection on. Uh, but there you go. Uh, so if I now wanted to say, well, actually I want to extend this side as well, we can do select nearest edit point as ripple out, which I have on shift Y. Boom. And then we can go plus 33. Boom. And now we've moved this side out that way while pushing everything down. So you can actually select your edit points doing this, right? I actually don't, I, I'm very, very keyboard oriented, but this is one of the few times in Premiere I'll come up and I'll just like click on it and then do it because that seems faster to me. But I, I, while I was getting ready for this video with you guys, I was like, I'm going to start trying to use these more uh, and get my and get myself off the mouse for that. Uh, but that's, so that's one of the things that you can do. Now you can say, uh, select nearest edit point as trim in, which was command E. And now it's got me this one, right? And I can do minus five, whoops, plus five. There you go. Plus five. And it's left that gap instead of the rollers right where it's where it's affecting both sides if you hold down your modifier key right if i come over here let's say i wanted to let's say i wanted to drag that out let's say let's say these i'm going to i'm going to undo that let's say i wanted to drag this out this back but i wanted to leave a gap here i can hold down command it gives me the red only one roller to one side and I click on that and then I can pull it and see how it left a gap. It didn't do the roller thing where it dragged this with it. Like if I was in roller right now, it's dragging both. But if I hold down the modifier key of command or control, I'm assuming if you're on a PC and I click there, I can, you know, of course I can keep holding command down and pull it out or I can go minus 55. That seems like a lot. Or I can do minus 22 and there you go. And it's pulled it out without pulling that with it. That's what select nearest edit point as trim in will do for you. That's different than select nearest edit point as ripple or roll. This is trim in or trim out, right? So I have it on uh, command E or uh, I have on option E, it'll go the other way, right? So option E, command E, option E, command E, and that'll select those edit points for you. Uh, if you wanted to do it as a roll, then you would do for me, wherever you've put yours, you do you shift R. Now you see it's affecting both sides, right? So now I can go minus five and it's moved at five frames. Uh, this got shorter, that got longer, and it moved it that way. Select as ripple in is uh, uh, command T, and then uh, ripple out is for me shift Y. There we go. And now I'm just using one keyboard, then I can go minus 55 and, uh, or, you know, uh, let me do this. Uh, uh, shift Y, uh, plus 55. Now I've pulled this out, right? While not affecting that clip. And I've kept everything all nice and neat for it. So I'm not entirely thrilled where I've mapped these on my keyboard. As you can tell, I don't use these functions all that often, uh, on the keyboard, but I'd like to get more in the habit of that. So I am going to remap these later after I'm done here. So that it makes a little bit more sense for me so that I can um, get used to using them more often. But here's the thing. One of the things that I really like that's, that's exactly similar in Premiere as it is in Avid is 
I really, really love doing the thing where I've got my, uh, I'm, I'm watching my, pro and let's say I get to here and I'm like, I don't want the rest of this. I drag that out. I don't want this right here. Let's get rid of the rest of this clip. So I'm playing the clip. I get to this part of the clip and I go, everything after it, I want gone, right? Everything to the side. So remember that we mapped on our keyboard, ripple trim next edit to playhead and ripple trim previous edit to playhead. These are so long, I can never retain, like I know what they mean and I know how to use them, but I can never remember the exact name of them. I will again, you should see it as a lower third here if I'm doing my job properly. Uh, so if you're just using where they were natively put on your keyboard by the Premiere uh, folks who programmed it, it will be on W and Q. For me, I put them on G and H, uh, but you do you. Wherever you put them is great. So I've got my playhead right here. I want to get rid of everything that's after it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit H. Boom. For you guys, it'll be W if you're using where it's natively at on your keyboard, right? I'm going to undo that. Uh, and show you again, H, boom, gone. Now, if I want to get rid of what's before it, I'm going to hit G, G, boom, gone. One keystroke, done. Delightful. I use this all the time. You guys are going to use Q if you're using it where it is natively to get rid of everything that's in this clip that's before the playhead. Boom, done. Love it use it constantly. I use it all the time. It's so great. Just go ahead and hit play and be like, yep, right there, H, everything after it's gone, right? For you guys, it'll be W if you're using it natively or wherever you mapped it. And that is, uh, that is the way it goes. That is the exact same function that I just showed you in Avid, right? H takes everything from behind it. G for me, or Q and W for you guys, takes everything from the beginning of it. That's the way it goes. It is so similar, these keyboard functions, to Avid, right? The one, the, the one thing that Avid doesn't have is the select the next edit point, right? We went cut to cut to cut while staying in trim, and that's totally fine. But one of the things that Premiere has that Avid doesn't is you can select the nearest edit point, right? And choose which tool you want as you select it. So like I showed you before, Command T, right? Now it's selected it as a ripple uh, trim and it's gone right to it, right? Or uh, I can uh, I can get out of that and I can, I can do a roll, which was Shift R and it went to the nearest cut point, uh, to the nearest edit point, right? So wherever your, if your blue bar is here and you do shift R, it's gonna select that. Now it's selected all of that. Uh, so go ahead and really, really rock out on that trim. But if I go shift R, there you go. And, uh, and it's wherever you've mapped it, right? You go ahead and map the nearest edit points and then you can get right to them while selecting the exact type of edit you want. So uh, for me, uh, Shift R put me into roll, but if I deselect that and I and I put my playhead here and I do uh, and I do Command T, which is where I mapped it. Now it's gone to that edit point and it's made it a roll function. And then I can minus 55 and I can just go ahead and start editing right from there. That is the one thing that makes Premiere edge out Avid ever so slightly. But honestly, I feel like it's a tie. I'm not really using the like go to the edit points as much as I really should. Uh, but for me, it's it's pretty much of a tie. I would give the slight edge to Premiere in this, but let's remember this was just an exhibition. This was not a competition. So please, no wagering. Hey, if you're finally ready to master Avid and double your job and income opportunities, I've got a class for that. Click the link below in the description and use the coupon code YouTube24 to get 15% off on this course. Let's demystify Avid together.